Oof, so I already know this video is about to make some people mad in the comments, but let's talk about the big debate that has everybody torn, some people just mad, Canon versus Sony for video. Alright guys, I'm just gonna get straight to the point, and what I think, I think Sony's better. And here's why. And hey, I think Canon's done a lot of great stuff. So until recently, I've actually been buying more Canon stuff than Sony because I just wasn't really too worried about the Sony cameras. It just really seems like in 2020, Sony just stepped up their game to video. And I'm not even gonna lie, they're catching up to Canon's color science. Like this right here is straight out of camera and I think it looks pretty good. And also the color grading with Sony, if you did wanna shoot in like S-Log2 or you know, something like that, it's gonna be really good. So if you're wanting more like flexibility so you can actually customize how your video looks instead of just kind of going for the natural look i mean sometimes you want that moody cinematic feel sony's probably going to help you with that oh and then the one that everybody knows the low light performance so you know that's been known for a while sony's just on top of that but dude they're getting even better with it like it's better than it was before and it just keeps getting better like the new fs6 their base ISO is like 12,800, I believe. It's like their second base ISO or something. I think that's pretty cool. And hey guys, if you're interested in new Sony videos coming out, it's a review on the a7C for video. Go check that out. That video will tell you if it's really a good video camera. It's coming out in a week or two, probably. All right, and the next thing about Sony, why I think that they're doing really good, they are really getting good with those small file sizes. And I think they've always kind of had that, but like, I have a Dell XPS 15, and it's a decent laptop, but it's no editing beast. Like, it can't handle crazy editing. Okay, I have a Canon 90D, and that shoots 4K. It's not even, like, full frame or anything, but this has to do with, you know, bit rate and file sizes and all that. I cannot edit a full 4K video without a crash, a glitch, or it having a literal seizure on me just out of nowhere, and then just, like, it shuts off. Then I have to go to the task manager and shut it all the way down so annoying but every time i drop in my sony a7c footage it just cuts through it like it it's nothing it doesn't even phase it and this is running at a decent bit rate right now i mean like you're probably not seeing all kinds of grain and compression everywhere i really doubt it that proves you can have you know decent editable files on a sony that look good still now hold up if you think i'm saying canon's bad you got it way off like dude i love canon but the thing is you just haven't woke up to video yet i don't think i mean yeah they have the 8k R5, but I mean, that's a little ahead of time, to be honest. Like, most people are not utilizing that, and plus, it overheats. So, really? I mean, not to bash on Canon, I just don't like some of the decisions that they're making, I guess. But what do I know? I don't make Canon products, so, I mean, they might be doing fine, but it just seems like they're not up with the trends because DSLRs are getting used more for video, less for photo, because of these. I guess the main reason I went with Sony, to be honest, like even though all that stuff is cool, there's a big main reason. And that's because Sony's just staying more up to date with what's going on. Canon's cameras are more photo based. And you know, that's a great thing. They do amazing at photos. And I still prefer Canon for photos to this day. And that's why I have my 90 ds And you could say, well, buddy, you know, that's what uh, DSLRs are supposed to be used for, taking pictures. And to that, I'd say you're right, but I mean, I've been taking a lot of photos on this, like for my Instagram, not for clients, but if it's an Instagram post and, you know, I just see a cool little picture, even if I have my camera bag with me, I'm probably just going to take the picture on my iPhone if it's going to look similar, because it probably will, especially after I edit it in Lightroom. So I don't stress too hard about, like, if I'm out solo shooting, you know, what my photos are going to look like, because my phone will have me covered. But if I'm doing video with a phone, it's not going to do the same thing as a DSLR. I mean, you can you can get some good results out of an iPhone, don't get me wrong, but just not the same to me. You know, if I take a picture on an iPhone, I don't feel like I'm limiting myself that much. If I do it on a phone with video, then I just kind of feel, I don't know, I just don't have the control, I don't have certain things. And yeah, they have those apps with controls and manual things that you can adjust and make it like a DSLR kind of, but it just, once again, doesn't feel the same. So that's why more people are using DSLRs for video nowadays. That's something Sony noticed and they struck hard on it. Like they instantly started making the A7C, the A7S III, the FX9 now, which isn't a DSLR, or not FX9, FS6. It's basically the FX9's little brother, but it's a really, really, really good camera. Like years from now, that's the camera I wanna have because it's like a video-based camera 
does really well and it's just crazy. But anyways, back on the point, DSLRs just aren't used for photos as much as they used to be. So I'm not saying Canon should stop doing their photo-based cameras because I hope they wouldn't because they're probably one of the better ones in my opinion for that. But I think that they should start focusing a little bit more on video. It just seems like Sony's leading in that game right now. I could be completely wrong. Like, I'm not trying to be a person who knows everything about cameras and, you know, all nerdy and everything. It just seems like Sony is fitting my style better. I really like Canon stabilization and their simplicity and their colors. And there's a lot of things that, you know, are really good about video for Canon. Like, that's not to say that they're short on anything, really. It just seems like they're not keeping up as fast. They're just not moving as quick with it. But hey, listen, just because I said all that, it does not mean that you should switch. Like, if you don't want to switch to Canon, or you don't want to switch to Sony, or you don't want to switch anything, or you can't, then don't worry about it. Like, it's not that big of a deal. It's just something that I could do. I could switch to Sony, and I wanted to switch to Sony, so I did it. There's just some reasons of my own, but, you know, some of those might not apply to you, and some of them you might completely disagree with, and if you know, you don't like the video, go ahead and dislike it, that's fine. If you did enjoy it, drop a like and tell me what you think. But I do want to say to everybody who's been sticking around lately and been watching because, you know, things are picking up a little bit and I really enjoy that and I appreciate you guys for it. So, thank you guys so much for sticking around, whoever's been watching for a while. It means a lot, I appreciate you guys and I'll see you in the next one.